This is Pastor Sean Cole, and it's good to be with you today. It's been a while since I've done a midweek live stream, and we used to do these a lot during the shutdown, the shelter in place where we couldn't be together and gather, um, but I felt like it would be important to just um, do a, just a really brief uh, teaching tonight, especially on the issue of uh, social media and how we tend to post things how we tend to interact with others, especially as a believer in Christ. How do you interact with others, especially on Facebook, on Twitter, um, in different social media contexts? Uh, I, I just, as I've been looking at Facebook, especially in Twitter, over the past few months, I've just seen so much vitriol so much accusations, um, just Christians not acting very godly when it comes to treating other Christians. And so I'm very concerned about how we present ourselves as believers in Christ on the internet. Now, let me just preface this by saying, I, I'm not saying that you should not have strong opinions or strong convictions. I'm not saying that at all. If you have strong convictions, you should have those. But we need to make sure that those convictions that we have, um, if, especially if they're secondary or third issues or issues that aren't even addressed in the Bible, that we don't elevate those to what we would call dogma or those absolute essential truths that are, that are crucial to the Christian faith or even secondary doctrines. What I'm seeing is a lot of things are just more a matter of conviction or opinion or conscience, especially related to um, how this whole COVID-19 thing has been operating. Should you wear a mask? Should you not wear a mask? How do you uh, relate to the governing authorities? Should school open? Should school not open? How should school open? How should we interact? And so these are really complex issues that sometimes you need to sit down face to face with another person and have an actual dialogue. I think a lot of times on social media, we're flamethrowers. We like to uh, f throw a flame out there and try to rile things up. So I want us just to give some biblical truth in this short live stream to explain how we as Christians should interact on social media. Uh, Romans 15.2 says, Let each of us please his neighbor for his good to build him up. Your neighbor, your fellow Christian, your brothers and sisters in Christ especially, are you, through your social media, seeking to build them up, to edify, to strengthen them? Ephesians 4.29, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. Now this says, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths or out of your keyboard strokes. Uh, what you post on social media, is it building up? Is it giving grace to those who read it? 1 Thessalonians 5.11, Therefore encourage one another and build one another up, just as you're doing. So here is my personal practice in regards to posting on social media. I always stop and ask myself this question before I post or before I repost, or before I like, is what I'm about to post or repost, does it build up? Does it edify? Does it give grace? Is it something that's going to reflect the gospel? If not, then you need to really seriously think about whether you should repost it or post it. Or And so, so many times we're driven by emotion. We want to just get out our emotion. And in the past, before social media, you'd have people around you that you can kind of vent to. But now it seems like everybody's venting on Facebook and everybody can see you're venting. There are some things that you may need to just keep to yourself. We're so reactionary. When we see a post, when we see something, our first uh, response is just to react to um, respond out of emotion. And we need to stop and think through the issues, maybe read some more, spend some time in prayer, and ask yourself, how should I respond? What I want to focus on is Philippians 4, 8, and 9. Paul says, Finally, brothers, whatever's true, whatever's honorable, whatever's just, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever's commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about 
these things. What you've learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Now, this is coming at the end of Paul's letter to the Philippians, which is focusing, the letter of Philippians focuses on joy in the gospel. Those are the two key words. Joy is repeated throughout Philippians, the word gospel. So really the theme of Philippians is joy in the gospel. But he gives two commands here, two verbs. And oftentimes when you look at the scriptures you want, and there's commands given, you want to look at the verbs. He says, think about these things and practice these things. So think, practice. And that's really the order of how the Christian life works. We think and we fill our minds with the things of God, and that in turn reflects how we practice, how we live it out. And so when Paul says, finally, brothers, whatever's true, and he gives a list of these things, he says, think about these things. In the original language, it means to consider, to reckon, to think deeply. Um, it's a command. It's also a command that's in the present tense, which means continually be thinking, ruminating, meditating on these things. So we have to ask the question, what are these things that Paul wants us to think about and to put into practice? So here's my argument from the very beginning here of what I'm challenging you on social media. You need to saturate your mind with these things, and we're going to go over those in just a moment, and those things should reflect how you put them into practice. And so when you're interacting on social media, on Facebook, on Twitter, are you thinking about these things and are you putting these things into practice? Okay, so what are these things? Well, let's look at the list here. If you have your Bible, Philippians 4, 8, 9, first of all, he says, whatever is true. Whatever's true. Now, that's very, very important on social media because there's so much falsehood. There's so much fake news. You need to really understand what is true. On Ephesians 4.25, Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbors, for we are members of one another. Speak the truth. Colossians 1.5, Because of the hope laid up for you in heaven, of this you've heard before in the word of truth, the gospel. And every time I do a live stream, my cat always wants to be let out. I should have let him out before. So let me let my cat out real quick and I'll come right back. Do felines automatically know when you're going to go live on Facebook? So one of the questions you need to ask yourself is how is thinking on the truths of the gospel, on the scriptures, helping your spiritual growth? Oftentimes, it's, it's really um, easy to embrace untruths or falsehoods or, or, or kind of just going with the emotions of the situation. You really need to establish what you're reading, what you're interacting with is, is true, especially biblically true. Are you speaking the truth in love? Okay, secondly, he says whatever is honorable, honorable or dignified. Um, you see this same word in Titus 2, too. Older men are to be sober-minded, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith and love, and in steadfastness. There's not a lot of sober-minded, dignified, self-controlled behavior on social media at times. It tends to be reactionary, emotional, lack of self-control. Is it honorable what you're thinking about? Number three, what is just? What is just? It's interesting, in Revelation 15, 3, they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and amazing are your deeds, O Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the nations. God Almighty is just and true. Are you thinking about things that are just, things that are true, honorable, just. And then number four, are you thinking about things that are pure? Pure. Is your thought life pure? What are some triggers that may tempt you to have impure thoughts or impure motives? Psalm 119, 9 through 11. I mentioned this, I think, last Sunday in, in my sermon. How can a young man keep his way pure? 
by guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up in your I've stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Are you thinking about what is pure? Number five, Paul says, Are you thinking about what is lovely? Lovely. It's a very rare word in the Greek language here. It means that which inspires love. Are you attempting to love your brothers and sisters? By what you're posting. Is what you're posting or what you're saying on social media, how you're interacting, does it inspire love? Psalm 84, 1 through 2, how lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul faints, my soul longs for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Are you focusing on what is lovely, that which inspires love? Those things that are attractive in a godly way. Number six, Paul says, think about whatever is commendable, commendable. Uh, This word means something that has great worth, someone who's kind, someone who does not cause offense but tries to win people. I often wonder on Facebook and social media, are you trying to win others over? Even if you have a strong argument, are you trying to win them over to your argument or are you just trying to flamethrow are you trying to cause division? Are you just trying to act in, in unself-controlled emotion? Are you being commendable? Are you focusing on things that are going to win people over? And number seven, he says, that which is excellent. And that really means morally excellent. Are you focusing on things that are morally excellent? And ultimately, that's the scriptures in, in God himself. Psalm 150 Verse 2, praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. And then number eight, whatever is praiseworthy. Praiseworthy. Psalm Psalm 18, verse 3, I will call upon the Lord who's worthy to be praised. And I'm saved from my enemies. You see, in a world of smartphones, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, social media, thousands of distractions. The question you've got to ask yourself, according to this passage of Scripture, is how can you continually think or mull over or meditate on these things? So so it starts in the mind. Paul's saying, think on these things. So if you're constantly filling your mind with the things of truth, things of the Scripture, things that are Um, praiseworthy things that inspire love, things that are pure. If you're focusing on these things and your mind is filled with these things, then what comes out of your mouth or what comes out of your keyboard or what comes out of social media will reflect these things. That's why Paul gives the second command there. So in verse 8, he says, think about these things. And then in verse 9, what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. Okay, so Paul's saying, listen, you've, he's talking to the Philippians. You, you learned from me, Philippians. I was your church planning pastor. You've received these truths. You've heard me preach. And not only have you heard me preach the gospel to you, teach you the scriptures, but you've seen it in my life. I'm an example to you. So practice these things. Put these things into practice. And it's continual action there. The truths of the gospel that you've been thinking on, and then Paul says, emulate my lifestyle. Ultimately, it goes back to James 1, 22 through 25, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. And then Paul ends this little section here with the God of peace. The God of peace will be with you. And so, it's, it's interesting, this whole idea of peace. When you continually think about gospel truths, about Scripture, God's peace will fill your heart. When you continually live in obedience to those truths, when you practice those things, God's peace will give you the strength to obey. So, in your social media interactions... The question is, are you 
thinking about things that edify, that glorify God, and are you putting those things into practice? So just a practical tip that I would encourage you with. Before you post or repost or like or vent or express, and I'm not saying you shouldn't do those things, so don't hear me incorrectly. Would you stop and ask yourselves before you begin to type or before you begin to use your thumbs or however you do it on your phone or your, your laptop or, or smartphone or whatever you, device you use, is what I'm going to post or say, does it reflect the, these things we've seen in Philippians 8? Is it edifying? Does it build up? Does it inspire love? Does it encourage? Is it gospel-centered? Is it focusing on the glory of Christ? Or is it just my emotional rant? Is it my selfish way of just kind of putting what I want to say out there? Is it self-controlled or is it just quickly out of emotion? Is it going to cause division? Especially is it going to offend another believer? Now, there's some things that we believe as Christians that are going to offend non-Christians, okay? We, we understand that. But we don't want to purposely give offense. Now, the gospel is offensive. The truths of Scripture are offensive to the unregenerate person who doesn't understand truth. And, and we understand that, especially when you're interacting with unsafe people on Facebook and social media. But what I'm concerned about is believer to believer, Christian brother to Christian brother, Christian sister to Christian sister, the way that Christians are treating one another. We need to be very careful. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. We are blood-bought family, adopted into God's family to live together in unity and love and encouragement. And so just be very here to stay. And um, there's some people I know that aren't even on it just because of the, the issues. It can become addictive, especially in this whole shelter in place time that we had a few months ago where all you're doing is you're reading and you're looking at posts and you're just consuming yourself with a screen and all of the opinions and all the thoughts and all the news and all everything. It's just everything is a screen. Get away from the screen and go read your Bible and spend time meditating on the truths of the Bible and let those truths impact how you interact. And so I hope this has been a good short encouragement to you. Um, just be careful how you use and interact on social media. Make sure it glorifies the Lord. Make sure it's true to the gospel and make sure that in all things, you're being loving, you're being encouraging. You can be strong in your opinions. You can be strong in your convictions. Just speak the truth in love. Well, until next time, as I always say, would you keep your eyes fixed on Jesus? Thanks for watching the live stream tonight. Manuel Baptist Church, love you. Can't wait to uh, see you on Sunday as we continue through the Gospel of Luke. Have a great day in the Lord.